All right, so in this video, we are going to learn, what are we going to do in this one? Um, we are going to talk about sending documents to students. So documents are different than quick polls, but there are some similarities. It's still sending something to a student and um, you have to either, well, no, with the document, you have to take the data. They can't submit it like they do in a quick poll. So I use documents for bigger files if I need to have multiple pages or if I'm doing any of the investigation activities. In order to actually send something to a student, of course the class has to be started and students have to log in because as soon as they log in, it should appear on their calculator. And I need to open a file. So let's open a document and I am going to find, hmm, what do I have? What can I send to you guys as? an actual file. Hmm. Oh, let's send out one of these. Here's an exploration activity. If I open it, now I can send it out to all of the students in the class. And as you can see, this is multiple pages. So obviously I would not want to send this out as a quick poll because all of the students need to receive all of these pages. So the way that I do this is differently. What I need to do is click this button here, send to class. And I want to send this to all of my students, um, whether or not they're logged in. So if I hit finish, my students are going to, oh, you know what? I can show you this on their screens because they're logged in. This is what my students are seeing right now. So they see, um, we'll have this person present to us. They have this where all files have been transferred. You can hit open. It's always going to ask you if you want to save. I don't know why this isn't refreshing. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. I think my navigators are having a hard time. So this is cool. You can see that it actually gives me a hard time sometimes. Um, do I want to save this? You're just going to say no. And what will end up happening is, is it will load. Some of the bigger files take a little bit of time. As you can see, mine's still thinking and thinking and thinking. Um, what I do want to point out, and this actually happens a lot, so I'm just going to jump off of the student screen for a minute. Oh, there we go, it loaded. But let's see this person here, they're in a panic. They're thinking that they did not get the file from you, but you can say, you know, hold on, take a step back, it's probably there, so go under my documents, which is two, have them open that up, and I'm in the technology to inspire class. So have them go down to that folder and they can hit enter to expand the folder. And oh, hey, there it is. So it's really there. They just must have clicked escape or they just didn't hit the correct key in order to open it the quick way as the first student did. So they can open it as well. They're going to go through the same process. So all of the students should be opening up this document. And I don't have to have, like a lot of times when I'm doing um, an investigation type activity, I just leave this screen up so that way all the students can see what the other students are doing. Sometimes it helps them. And what I would recommend with an investigations type activity is letting the students um, work in groups because it helps them to troubleshoot a little bit better, especially if they're having, I don't know, just like they can't grab a point. So they might be having a really hard time. Um, in order to navigate to all of the pages, the students will hit control left and right arrows. We do this in class, so you should probably already have experience with moving these. Or you can wiggle your mouse and click on so let's see who is presenting. What screen do I have right now? Um, okay, this is one I have in my hand, so I'll present. I can either wiggle my mouse and click it up here just to navigate between pages, or I'm pressing Control and right arrow. And as the presenter does everything, their keystrokes are recorded. So if I hit Control, right arrow, it shows that in the red. 
Um, one thing that I've noticed a lot of students try to do is they push down on the mouse when really it's a touch mouse. So tell them not to push because if they do that, they start clicking and then it turns into a disaster. When you're done, okay, so let's say the activity's finished. Everybody has done everything that they were supposed to do, even though clearly we didn't. I'm going to X out of the screen capture. I want to take this file back from them. I don't want it on their calcul calculators anymore either. So in the review tab, uh, nope, just kidding. In the class tab up here, I'm going to click that. And you can see all of the class records of the files that I've sent. Right now, I've only sent just this one file. Um, what I can do is I'm going to right click it. Um, nope, I'm going to right click this top one because this technology to inspire is the folder. This is exploring domain and range. I can right click this and then collect from the class. Okay, so I'm taking this from all of my kids. So that's a quick way to just take it from them and leave the file on the calculators. But I actually want to take this from them and delete it off of their handhelds. So I can do that instead of right clicking this and collecting, I can use this collect feature up here. Because when I collect using this feature here, I can select the file that I want to take that has already been sent to them hit next, and now it lets me delete the um, file from the handheld after collecting. So if you don't care about leaving that file on, maybe you want to just use that file all day long, it will stay on those handhelds regardless of who's logged in. But for me, I want to take this. So let's pretend this is something that they typed in that I'm actually collecting and grading for them. I'm going to hit finish. So now as it takes this file, it sometimes takes a little bit, but here we have all three of the four selected. And you might ask, why is Nicole in red? Well, she was never logged in, she wasn't there, so it was not taken back from her and probably not even sent out to her. If I capture my class, oops, so the capture class, you can see that this message, all files um, have been transferred, has come up. So if they go into my documents again, the folder, um, who do I have? Is this me? I don't know. Yep. So I'll make this person a presenter. I'll do that again. So if we go to my documents, we can see this folder, Technology to Inspire, doesn't have anything in there. It's empty now. Whereas if I just collected it from them just to get the data back from that particular work that that student did and wanted to leave it on there, then you would still see this file in there. And is that everything that I wanted to talk about in this video? Hopefully. Um, so yeah, that wraps everything up in terms of all of this. You can actually, oh no, there's one more thing. I can always right click this and save this to the portfolio. So if, um, let me think of an example of why I would want to save this. Investigation activities I don't really care to save because I don't care about the work that they did on the calculator. I care about the work that they're putting on their papers. Um, but what I would use this for is in, let's say an SAT prep class. I have all of my students submit their answers um, in a pre-created file that I have made. So I know what students are missing and what students are um, getting the questions correct. And I use it as a data collection. I would want to save that to my portfolio. Um, we can name it whatever we want. I'll just hit save. And what ends up happening is now we have the document exploring domain and range in there. I can click on it and see all of the responses. Right now you don't see any of the responses because it didn't really require them to submit anything in terms of questions. But if there were question pages and if they did answer them, it would appear in this file here.